Hi there, Doug Stuman with IT Creations. Today we have another server from Gigabyte, the Gigabyte G292-Z22 GPU server. It supports AMD's second or third generation AMD Epic processors with up to 64 physical cores and 128 virtual threads. This is a 2U single socket platform designed for high performance computing, artificial intelligence, AI training, AI inference, scientific analysis, virtual desktop infrastructure, and you can add up to eight double wide GPUs. Let's take a look. Before we start, if you like our reviews, hit that subscribe button. There's only one way to avoid the dreaded FOMO, and that's by subscribing. I'm gonna start this one out with confusion. There are seven of these G292 platforms within this group. There are single and dual processor systems. All support AMD Epic processors, except for one anomaly, the G292-280. That one can be outfitted only with third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. I'm gonna knock that one off the list right now. Let's add some graphics, this is boring. Between the systems, there are differences. Motherboards, of course, number of processors, supported memory, and PCI generation supported, either PCI 3.0 or 4.0 on the PCI and storage bus. I say that because all of these platforms look remarkably similar. Even on the manufacturer page, it was hard to tell the difference between some just based off the specifications. Dual socket systems include the G292-Z40, G292-Z42, and G292-Z44 and that Intel Xeon-based system that I already got rid of. I'm gonna knock those dual socket systems off the list right now. Remember, we are focusing on the single socket G292-Z22. Wait a minute, are you interested in the Gigabyte 292-Z22 GPU server? Or perhaps the Z20, Z24, Z40, Z42, or Z44? Crap, I left out that red-headed stepchild of the bunch, the Intel Xeon-based G292-280. If you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $500 off the purchase price of the G292-Z22 system listed on our site at $5,000 or more. That's right, just click that link to see our pre-configured systems or just put a system together using our configurator. No video and no discount for the others yet, but we can still offer you a great deal. Hello? Oh, that was quick. Yes. To further confuse the issue, there are two revisions for most of these systems, including those dual socket systems, revision 100 and a revision A00. Rev 100 supports second generation AMD EPICS and Rev A00 supports third generation AMD EPICS. Initially I thought, oh, 100 is greater than A00, so that must be the latest update. Nope, it's the A00 for the latest update. For clarity, we'll only be looking at the latest revision, A00. The remaining single socket systems in this category include the G292-Z20, our review system today, the Gigabyte G292-Z22, and lastly, the G292-Z24. So Z20, Z22, and Z24. All single socket AMD-based platforms feature the MZ22-Z20 motherboard, which has no integrated chipset because of the AMD Epic system on a chip design. What, you may be asking, are the differences between these systems? All three support Gen 3 AMD Epic CPUs with revision A00, but are compatible with the second generation Epics 2, and that would be the OG revision 100. Our system is the only one that has a mixed PCI bus supporting PCI Gen 3.0 on the GPUs and PCI 4.0 for add-on cards. So basically we have the one that will probably hit the end of life first. Fear not, we can get all the other systems too. I'll support M.2 as well. Let's take a look at the exterior. I'll be honest, it does look pretty much like that last one. And for that one, I mean the G291-Z20 we did a while back with support for Gen 1 AMD Epic processors. And you can see that one here. Kind of like a futuristic troop carrier for a budget sci-fi movie on Netflix. Imagine thrusters on the side and deployment gangways right down the middle for troop landings on exotic worlds. I think Gigabyte used the same images on the product page and photoshopped in the slight color changes for the two storage bays on the far right. They wouldn't do that though, would they? The chassis has a symmetrical organization on the outside with eight 2.5 inch storage bays down the middle and a large fan module to either side next to the handles, just like the G291-Z20. However, the storage bays on the right with the orange tabs will accept two hot swappable NVMe Gen 3.0 U.2 drives. The other six bays will support hot swappable SATA drives or SAS, but you will need a discrete HD RAID controller for SAS. A control panel on the left server ear features a power on button, plus a few LEDs to indicate health status of the LAN ports 1 and 2, HDD status, and a button to activate system identification on the back of the system. Turning to the back, 
there are two more gigantic fans to either side to pull heated air out of the chassis. Between those fans are two 2200 watt 80 plus platinum PSUs in a two plus zero configuration. As a public service announcement, Given these PSUs are not redundant, Gigabyte has incorporated a feature called cold redundancy, which will place one PSU in standby mode if total load falls below 40%. Just above the PSUs, there's a VGA port, dedicated gigabit ethernet management LAN port, two 10 gigabit ethernet SFP plus LAN ports, and two USB 3.0 ports, with two low profile half length PCI Gen 4 ports above that. Popping the cover off this system requires the removal of a few screws. That one gigabit LAN port is IPMI 2.0 compatible and provides access to the Aspeed AST2500 remote management controller on the system board. Yeah, that thing. For remote management of the system, these management applications are free of charge from Gigabyte and provide general health monitoring, troubleshooting, inventory, and resource utilization monitoring to help reduce server downtime. There are two Gigabyte applications to manage the system. On a side note, free is my favorite price for both goods and services. These applications include the Gigabyte Management Console for a single server implementation and the Gigabyte Server Management, or GSM, for multiple server management. Both have an HTML 5.0 user interface and support RESTful API and Redfish, so you can talk to other third-party management applications. Inside, the symmetrical layout continues with the motherboard down the center flanked by PCI 3.0 riser cages for the GPUs with a 2x2 stack setup on each side. There are eight fans total. Two large fans to either side of the hard drives pushing cool air over the front GPU cages, which vent air towards the middle of the chassis. The GPU-centered air mixes in with fresh air pushed over the motherboard by the other two fans staggered behind the hybrid storage backplane. Another set of fans halfway down the chassis pulls in air from perforated panels on either side of the metal case, which is then sucked out the back by the two fans on the back of the case. It's an elegant design. Looking at the motherboard, there are two PCI 3.0 slots at the front, with one supporting a by 4 slot and the other a by 2 slot. These support SATA or NVMe M.2 drives that can be used to boot the system, preserving your upfront storage. The power management board is located underneath the motherboard. The major difference between the G291-Z20 and the G292-Z22 comes down to the PCI bus. A Gen 3 PCI bus for the GPU expansion slot is found on the G291-Z22, while the G292-Z20 has a PCI 4.0 bus for the GPUs. Just to drive it home, revision A00 adds support for a third generation AMD processor, while revision 100 supports a second gen AMD CPU. The numbers say it all. Two times the performance per socket, including IO bandwidth and four times more floating point calculations per socket. These are clearly the numbers using the Gen 3 epics. The G292-Z20 and the G292-Z22 share the same manual. I'm not sure why they left out the G292-Z24. I was having a hard time discerning the difference between the Z20 and the Z24, but let's not get into that. Strangely enough, the Z20 version is more advanced version with the Gen 4 PCI bus for all expansion slots, while the Z22, with a higher number, supports a mixed PCI 4.0 and 3.0 bus with the GPUs occupying the 3.0 bus. I would have thought it was the other way around given 22 is greater than 20, but that is not the case. Right in the middle of the board, is the third generation AMD Epic Milan CPU supporting up to 64 cores and 128 PCI 4.0 lanes. I mean, you could use a second gen Epic, but why bother? Either way, the drivers and updated BIOS you can download for the system on a chip CPU is the same for both second and third generation Epics. So that makes it easy. To either side of the CPUs are four memory module slots for a total of eight active slots, each of which operates in one of the eight memory channels for maximum memory bandwidth. I had a hard time nailing down exactly what cards are supported, but definitely the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000 and 8000 with passive cooling and the Tesla T4. It's also qualified with AMD's Radeon Instinct M150 32GB accelerator. Without getting specific, this system can also be loaded with Qualcomm ASIC accelerators and Xilink? Zeeklink? Xilink? Anyways, they produce FPGA accelerators for data center applications and not a whole lot of specific GPUs or FPGAs are listed such as life. As the PCI bus on the system is Gen 3 and not Gen 4, there's no need for anything more. For all of these cards, including the T4, it's listed a maximum of eight cards total. Lastly, we have the two PCI Gen 4 low profile half height slots on the back of the system. Same for the G292-Z22 and the Z20 for dual high performance IO cards or for control of the optional SAS drives with a discrete controller. The thing about these reviews is that when a new processor is released, it will support a certain set of features. 
Usually that same processor will get an upgrade from the manufacturer, opening additional pathways on the circuitry that were already there, but just lying dormant. The platform manufacturers work with the CPU foundries to push out the new version and the new abilities, hence the original Rev100 supporting second gen EPICS, which was updated to the Rev A00 supporting third generation EPICS. That'd also be why these videos do not age well. Until the next revision, or at least the next server review, hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. I'm Doug Stumann with IT Creations. Thanks for watching.